In the previous video you saw that my engine broke. I was on the way from the Bahamas to the Dominican Republic and off the coast of Turks and Caicos this happened. Okay my engine just stopped working. That's not good. The wind is now dying here. I was almost at the bank for the entrance. I cannot go in there uh, on a sail. Uh, not sure what to do. Okay this thing is stuck and it was squeaking it so it's just broken. I, I honestly don't know what to do. Um, I use a regular water pump to create an anti-freeze circulation system that got me six miles further into an anchorage of an island where there are no amenities and there also is no internet. The problem with a regular water pump is that it's rated to 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius and antifreeze heats up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius so the pump would get too hot and eventually break. I need to do another 16 miles to get to the big island where there are amenities and where there is internet and I added a water jug to the system so now the pump sucks water from the water jug and then pushes it through through the engine and then it comes back into the water jug and the extra amount of water in the water jug will hopefully, hopefully decrease the temperature enough so that the water pump will not break. I connect the plus and minus on the battery and there it goes. I strapped the jerry jug to one side of the boat that if the boat rocks from left to right that it doesn't fall over. Even though the system might get me all the way to the Dominican Republic, I decided to go for safety, rather be safe than sorry. And I decided to order the part to the Turks and Caicos. And well, at least I get to see something of the Turks and Caicos. That's pretty cool. We get to see something of the Turks and Caicos. These are the Turks and Caicos. Right now I'm at West Caicos. This is a private island. They were building a marina where I am, but due to hurricane years ago, it was partly destroyed and uh, the build was put on hold. There is uh, one person on the island. Uh, this is the main settlement. It starts about 16 miles away and that's where I will be relocating soonish. Currently my only form of communication is a satellite device where I can only send text messages with. A friend of mine in the States is helping me to get the part from the States to the Turks and Caicos. I'm waiting to go to the mainland until I know when it will arrive because it costs $50 for a week to um, check in here or $300 after a week if you want to stay longer. So I'm trying to keep it on that $50 for a week. There's one guy living on the island here. As far as I know, it's a private island. I asked him if I could take a walk. It was fine. Somewhere over there, two and a half miles further, is Yankee Town. It used to be inhabited here, not anymore. I think it was salt mining, so there should be ruins of a town. So let's check it out. Until now, it's just been one long road that feels like a desert. This is an airstrip, or it was built one day as an airstrip. I wouldn't want to land an airplane here right now. Normally I use Google Maps, find where I need to go to. Don't have internet, can't use it. So now I'm using Navionics, my boating software. And I look at it and it says I'm walking 3.8 knots. That's the average boat speed I've been doing going upwind coming here. That's crazy. I've been in quite some situations that felt quite dangerous. And then to think about the fact that I'm only doing walking speed. We have arrived. There are some ruins on this side and this is an old locomotive. This must have been a well. I mean it is a well. Is there water? There is water on the bottom. Here another deep foundation I guess of a house. I wonder why it's so deep. Maybe because of the hurricanes for a shelter. Here's another part of a locomotive. It reads the Grassley Brothers Limited, Manchester. And another part of a locomotive. Well, I guess the locomotive parts are spread everywhere. Another really deep ruin here. A little further is the ocean. Oh, this is cool. I wouldn't mind having this as my backyard. Walking back towards the boat, 
when I left an hour earlier, the one guy that lives on the island said to me, hey, I'm making soup. If you come back and you want, we'll have a cup of soup together. So we're gonna have a cup of soup with him. Finish the day with a nice bowl of... Milk soup. Noodle soup? Milk. Kilk? Milk. Kilk soup? Milk. Wilk. Yeah. A lot of fresh vegetables. Thank you very much. There you go. So the broth we're going to eat it. And rice. <laughs> the boat is over there. And now I'm going to take a nice swim in the beautiful blue water here. If my engine ever breaks down again in the future, I hope it is close to a similar place like this. I re-anchored the boat because it was a bit close to shore and because I wanted to try it all out and I found out that this hose gets really flexible when it gets hot and the other ones doesn't. So I guess this is less heat resistant so I will replace this hose for the longer trip. This is day four on the island. Today the part that broke from the coolant pump uh, should arrive at a friend of mine in the States and then he will FedEx it. Once he FedEx it I have an idea of how long it will take to arrive. I wonder what I would do if I would be stuck here during COVID times. I think I'd probably build a house out of rocks or trees or something. Yeah, so today I'm going to take a walk on the beach and if I see something exciting, I'll film it. I'd like to talk about mental health for a minute. During my travels a while ago, I was at a bunch of postcards places, you know, those, those places that if you look at them on a flyer at home, you'd be like, wow, if only I could be there, all my problems would be gone and I'd feel amazing. Uh, and I was there and I was thinking like, I really don't feel amazing. And I didn't understand why and now I actually do. Like I, I, I feel like we see life through a lens, uh, a colored lens. Uh, so let's say that a green lens would mean, green glasses would mean we see life very positive and red glasses would be we see life very negative. And my lens was rather red. And I found out for myself that this was because of the story that I was telling myself of my past. Um, yeah, there are a lot of things happened in my past and I've been rather focusing on the negative and that story I kept repeating to myself. Um, and then I, I'd given it a lot more thought and I thought, was my life actually rather negative or rather positive? And I thought about it and actually my life has been 80% positive and 20% negative, I would say. I had just been focusing on the 20 percent and unconscious kept repeating that story to myself so what i did is i took a pen and paper and i wrote down all the things that i that, that i actually really enjoyed and like i have a i have a really loving mother i grew up on a farm uh, i i really have uh, i was playing a lot with friends uh, i grew up in a country where there was no war um, I love to jump on hay bales and straw bales with friends and we had dogs and a lot of room to play and I wrote down that story and I actually kept repeating that to myself on a daily basis and it actually became the new story that I tell myself and that actually has given me a really thousand percent more positive outlook on life as I guess the glasses that I see life through turned really green instead of a bit red which they were 
And I thought I mentioned this story in case there's anyone out, out there who uh, finds it helpful for themselves. Ooh, I found some buildings on the uh, on the island. You guys want to check it out? Let's do it. Seems like some kind of hotel complex that they once started to build and never finished. I was filming here at the hotels or whatever it was, and this car stops over there and they're shouting at me, "What are you doing? What are you doing here? What are you doing here?" <laughs> and I, I'm really scared. And I go to the car and I see it's the one guy on that lives on the island. He was just. He was just messing with me. I can be here. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is gonna need some work. Do you ever want to finish this? What a shame. This place must have been ready to go. Microwaves, whole kitchen setup, laundry machines. Here's a massive water pump. It seems pretty new actually. This is a. Uh, the actual apartment complex with a lot of you know, half finished rooms. Well, I think this was it. I'm gonna end my morning with a swim in the beautiful blue water. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow. On my way back to the boat, the guy from the islands was cooking giving me a fish and a vegetable soup. There is a sweet potato in, must be a local product. And it tastes like there's honey inside, it's really good. I, I have to say that travel has really opened me up to the kindness of total strangers. So the local allowed me to have a, an actual shower in one of these cabins, that was really nice. So, ooh, look like a uh, Mario bro now. Wow, my hair really exploded. Uh, and also, occasionally I am on his internet. So that's really awesome. So it really is easier to arrange things like that. And uh, I'm in this group of people who go from the Bahamas to Dominican Republic, a bunch of people. And it's actually quite comforting to read that everybody, no matter when they go, have a really hard time doing it. At least it comforts that I'm not actually doing something wrong. It is really difficult. So tonight I'm gonna have a barbecue with a local here. He doesn't really like to be on camera, so I'll keep him out of it. And the grill is on. I'm doing dishes, at least I feel like I can do something back. Today's the day and I'm going to do 16 miles to Provo Providencialis, the main island on Turks and Caicos. Let's start the engine and put the pump on. I am here right now, I have to go up here through the Sandborn channel. It's an hour before low tide right now. Once I'm through, whatever happens, I should be able to sail here. I'm gonna tow the dinghy with the engine behind the boat in case of emergency. It is slack tide now. Um, it's quite calm, but uh, there must be a lot of current. Just we cannot, we cannot get any faster. It has been really tough to get through this channel. Tried shields back and forth, tack back and forth. Seems like it's calming down a little bit. It's been really hard. Still under 130 degrees, that's good.
shit and the engine is overheating uh, the engine started overheating again I don't know why uh, so it's a bit shallow here as uh, was mentioned on avionics I hope that goes okay uh, I'm not far away I'm going to tack for two and a half miles I guess uh, we'll drop the anchor under sail uh, unless the engine is cooled down enough so I can do it uh, on the engine still. I don't really understand what went wrong because the, the pump is still working. Looking back at it, I think I should have stayed at the other place and just arranged a ride back and forth, check in the country and then pick up the parts. But hey, at least I made a choice. All right, let's get safe into the anchorage now. Okay, okay, let's stay here for a while, see if everything's okay, and check in the country. <laughs> I read in a book about Turks and Caicos that it could be really tough getting in the Sambor channel, uh, but some other people said it wasn't, and I noticed for me it was, even though I came at slack tide. I wanted to go the rum line, the purple dotted line from here and then up here but without having the sail filled even a little bit I just couldn't move forwards so I decided to go into the shallower area in the hope that there would be less waves and uh, it would be easier to move forward uh, and um, stay close to shore to get some protection but honestly it really did not work at all but uh, yeah made it I went to the one neighbor boat next to me to say that I am very limited in maneuverability. And guess what? When I left Guatemala, he had a boat literally next to me. And now he's taking care of this cabin right here. Like, what, what a coincidence. And he has the use of a car. And now we're going together to town to check in and uh, try to get a sim card welcome to provo turks and caicos i just checked in it was 60 dollars for customs it would have been 50 dollars but i was 10 minutes past 4 pm so anywhere between four and five is overtime that they count it as a weekend. It's ten dollar, whatever. Um, then this will be the same charge when I leave the country. Then for um, for the passport stamp was fifteen dollar. That was cheap, but also have to pay it again when exiting. Um, and then for the marina, I have to pay for a day pass because the marina is the only place that does check-ins. I have to pay thirty dollar for the marina for a day pass to be here that customs come here but if I she told me later if I would have gotten diesel then I would not have to pay for that day pass so if I would have gotten a gallon of diesel or a quart I would not have had to pay that $30 so I'm like can I can I just uh, get some diesel and refund this okay that was not possible but when I check out I can do that so when I check out I still have the uh, $75 again for customs and uh, and for the passport stamp but I will get a couple liter a couple gallon of diesel to not pay for the marina <laughs> they just picked me up again and we end our day with a beer I think I deserved it 